We're going to look at how we use Genially and a few other apps to gamify our classroom with a sort of choice board type structure. I've been digging into Genially over the last few months and really like it as sort of an advanced Google Slides type interface. You can do a lot of neat stuff just by linking a bunch of slides together and adding some of their interactive tools. We're going to look at a big example through our world map and a smaller example of like a puzzle that you could do in one class period. I want you to pretend like you are a new student in our class. New students to our class get to choose what they want to study each quarter. It's a self-paced mastery-based classroom where students study accelerated content in the area that they're most interested in. We base those uh, study areas also on sort of like a character class, like in a video game or a tabletop RPG. So if you're studying science for a quarter, you're going to be a ranger that quarter. If you're studying math that quarter, you're gonna be a magician. Once students choose their character class and choose what they're gonna study, we do a quick tutorial video to show them how our Genially Hub works and how they can get to their various activities. Students have a variety of must-do type activities that we'll talk a little bit more about and look at as we go. These carry them through different sort of accelerated pathways into getting deeper in their study area. These include things like video notes, which we call training sessions, monster hunts, which are our mastery checks. You get the idea. Everything's themed and accessible on our world map. Students also have access to a progress tracker where they'll be earning experience points. Basically, if they show mastery in something, they get points adding up to 100 where they'll level up. There's a few things about our world map hub that students find particularly interesting. Genially allows the teacher to add interactive and clickable objects. These are used to do things like insert puzzles and flavor to the world map and gamify the choice board. So students are doing their activities and that's their primary expectations. But whenever they have some downtime, they might explore some different puzzles and clues that they find throughout the map. Each area of the map and each class hub has distinct characters with set and randomized dialogue that you can do through Genially. Teachers can move these, add new characters, connect dialogue to puzzles and activities within the world map. We can expand sort of the background story as it goes. If you look around the map, you'll notice different locations you can click. And we can also connect those locations with things that extend our students' learning. For example, students can visit the STLP workshop to submit projects for the STLP team, which they may use to compete whenever STLP has their big statewide competition in the spring. Teachers can also build in and create larger puzzles and things for students to solve and unlock rewards. The first big example of this that we did took a lot of careful exploration from students and student collaboration. The first student group just solved the code that they needed to unlock a puzzle and unlock a secret room right before midterm. Many of them were completely thrilled to have done so. Genially allows the teacher to build in should do or extending opportunities for students to continue their learning. Like I said, we call these side quests and they're optional. They're those should do type activities in a must do, should do, and aspire to do type structure like you get with the modern classroom project, which we use to structure our assignments. Side quests gradually unlock over time on the world map so as not to overwhelm students or their teachers. New areas for side quests, like the Grand Library unlocked because students work together to complete a challenge. And you can see kind of how we put that challenge on the main page so that students can access it. Teachers can add plaques and trophies to commemorate students who complete challenges and unlock new areas. For example, a clickable plaque lists students who unlocked the library that I'm talking about. Students can always go back, click that, and see that they were one of the ones who completed that challenge. Timed exclusive events will begin to appear for students as the class goes on. For example, students may opt to participate in an event to protect a traveling trader from monsters with only a week to complete a quizzes challenge to earn a reward. A little bit more about gamifying the experience, and I won't go too deep into this, but all students have character sheets noting their level and experience earned in the quarter. I have this linked to a Google to the Google Sheet progress tracker and can update it in Google Slides so that it'll always show students level and the amount of experience points they've earned in a quarter. Students also have things like a health bar. They have attack skills and things like that. We're going to be using these in what we call adventures, which are special competitive events using structure from TTRPGs and video games as models. Students progress through a quest, working together in groups to solve puzzles and defeat monsters. Students can earn upgrades to their bonus skills too, as another one of those sort of freebie rewards that we can build into the class. 
Students complete something like a side quest for STLP and they might get an extra point in their technology skill. Uh, maybe they do a specific social studies lesson on economics and help us with like a market project. They might get a point for it. These can be used in their adventures for flavor and for solving puzzles and things like that. Most of the characters that we've built in the, to the world map have a character sheet too. So students can kind of see those as a model of things that they might unlock later. And it allows us to add a little bit more flavor to the world. Students can earn several physical extras as rewards as well. Academy coins are just stamped wooden coins that we got off Amazon and put a little Academy stamp on that we can give the students for completing side quests where they can buy little things like our item cards. These can help students in our adventures and other challenges in the school year. Students can win or buy a blind bag of three of these in our weekly tournament games. And as you know, students basically love any type of blind bag randomized reward they can get their hands on. Every Wednesday, students play quiz games on websites like Bluekit and Gimkit as a big group. We call these our sparring session tournaments for the week. They always have access to these different uh, Bluekits and Gimkit modes that they can get into and study on their free time. So a lot of students will go and get on those things whenever they're done with all of their other work and other classes to kind of get some practice in before our big weekly tournament. The top three winners for each of those games and sometimes a randomized winner just to get some more students involved will roll for prizes as you'll see on our chart over here where they can win things like stickers, candy, or those item cards that I just mentioned. A few things that we're planning to do in the future for this class, new activities will continue to unlock for students. For example, a lake will open up soon. Students who have received fishing bait item cards can use a capsule machine, basically just a little quarter machine I purchased to win randomized and sometimes hilarious prizes. Groups of monsters may attack the academy. This will allow for larger groups like whole class groups to utilize some of the mechanics from the character sheet and from those adventures that I talked about. Students will work together to roll dice, battle monsters, and win prizes as a whole class. We really want student designs to be celebrated. Student creations and art should kind of gradually replace a lot of the generated content you'll see whenever you're exploring the site. Students can now participate in a side quest to draw monsters for our monster hunt activities as one example. They went kind of crazy with this and really enjoyed drawing stuff that we can use for our map in the future. Students can do things like invest their academy coins into the opening of a local academy newspaper. We want sort of that student ownership. When that little area on the hub opens, we'll showcase student writings from side quests that they might do and publish story and flavor articles that some of our students might write or create to further expand the world with some student authorship. Now, here's what I'd like everybody to do. If you don't mind to go into the Academy World Map page, click around, check the area that might apply to what you find the most interesting to study and see if you can find any little hidden secrets or areas on the map. We're also looking for advice. What do you think would be fun to add for students and how would you expand the world?